Well, greetings and welcome back. First of all, I want to mention that Les McCann passed away on December 29th. To me, one of the all-time great jazz artists. So sad to hear of his passing, and I'll be listening to the song compared to what? One of my favorite tunes of all time, which he co-wrote with Eddie Harris, and he certainly will be missed. I caught the last episode of Real Sports with Brian Gumbel on HBO, and though I didn't see that many of them, they endured for 29 years, and the reporting was absolutely superb. And they pulled no punches and exposed all of the injustices, graft, and nasty underbelly of sports, especially overseas, as they reported, they reported covering nearly 70 countries. And I witnessed some interviews that got very ugly, as many of the guests got quite angry and some even walked off the set. One report back in 2004 documented slavery and torture in secret desert camps where boys under the age of five were trained to raise camels, a national sport in the United Arab Emirates. The investigative report exposed the carefully hidden child slavery ring that bought or kidnapped hundreds of young boys in Pakistan and Bangladesh. These boys were then forced to become camel jockeys in the UAE. The report also questions the sincerity of U.S. diplomacy in pressuring an ally, the UAE, to comply with its own stated policy of banning the use of children under 15 from camel racing. The documentary won a Sports Emmy Award and also brought world attention to the plight of child slavery in the Middle East. And in February of 2006, Gumbel made remarks regarding the Winter Games, saying, So try not to laugh when someone says, these are the world's greatest athletes, despite a paucity of blacks that make the Winter Games look like a GOP convention. <laughs> That's a good one. And much of this article was taken from Wikipedia, so thank you. Plus, they exposed Vince McMahon for all of the deceptions, lies, and lack of support for his wrestlers, who put their bodies and minds on the chopping block every time they stepped into the ring. And he was always a piece of shit anyways. And I will miss real sports. You gotta love the people that expose these horrible inequities in the world as there are a lot of assholes in power out there. I think we all know that. I never understood why so many people in power decide to exit the human race with their lies or lack of decency and humanity. And it's no wonder that the fantastic song, Come and Get Your Love from the group Redbone, is getting tons of airtime on YouTube and in TV commercials, specifically Chevrolet recently. And it was featured back in the 2018 ads for Bouegg, a French telecom and internet company. The song is from 1973, and Redbone was a Mexican and native Indian group. Overall, a very inspirational song with great vocals, lyrics, and music. A must listen to. And back in 1964, Frank Zappa formed a band called the Mothers of Invention, which only lasted for five years, and he was quite a character. He was definitely a brilliant and nonconformist musician, and his music style could be defined as avant-garde, free-form improvisation, or even sound experimentation. He continued to compose and produce some wild music while being known to be a very, dema very demanding of his musicians. There were several books written about Frank, and he was very likely to have been a genius as he had a vision for his music that was spontaneous and unusual. And I won't go too deep into this, but he also crafted the PMRC Senate hearing, or the Tipper Gore Frank Zappa hearing, as he, Dee Snyder, and John Denver passionately defended artistic freedom before the federal government back in 1985. I do recall some of the other hearings that he was involved in back in the late 80s and early 90s, I believe it was, on drug trafficking, bringing up the statistics on the amount of drugs that come into this country and he's stating that 95% of all traffic drugs come into the United States, which of course translates into 5% for the rest of the world. It's crazy. But I could not, for some reason, find much info online about this. And sometimes I don't have the patience to rummage through dozens of online posts on specific topics. I'm not a very patient person anymore. I guess I never was. Because at my age, the clock is ticking faster and faster all the time. And my wife is going to a health facility four days a week in the morning before she goes to work in response to her open heart surgery about four months ago. And she was telling me that her trainer is very driven and intense. And I told her that she should tell the trainer that you're freaking me out here. You're going to give me a heart attack after having surgery to prevent having a heart attack. So ease up a bit. <laughs> 
And recently I was laughing hysterically while watching some of the Seinfeld episodes, and the two that I saw featured a situation where Lane goes on a date with a guy, and they seem to be hitting it off. And as the date comes to an end, they're in the car, and her date takes it out. Yes, takes it out. And when she goes to Jerry's apartment, Jerry asks, how, was the, how did the date go? And she says, oh, very interesting. He wants more info, and she tells him he took it out. Jerry hesitates, and he asks again, he took it out. She responds by saying, he took it out. <laughs> Jerry responds again, saying, he took, and before he can complete that sentence, Elaine said, it out. <laughs> it's much funnier on screen, especially with the cast. And then Kramer, of course, walks in. He asks about the date, and she responds again, he took it out. <laughs> Kramer got to the point, physically shuddered, and then he states, you know, it doesn't get much air down there. It does need to come out every now and then. <laughs> Elaine naturally is not impressed with his comment. I was in tears when I saw this scenario, and there's something about Seinfeld episodes that retain their solid humor, as, there's, as there were dozens of these situations that could bring tears to your eyes. Seinfeld could basically be labeled theater of the absurd. And my last one is also about, and this was another Seinfeld episode, it was called The Wife, where his girlfriend poses as his wife in order to get a dry cleaning discount. And as the relationship moves forward, she keeps asking him to take on more responsibilities. And he slowly realizes that he's not up to the game. So he breaks off the relationship, as he naturally does all the time, and explains that I'm just not ready for a make-believe marriage yet. <laughs> Again, hysterical, and I'm out. <laughs> 